Uniformly accelerated motion is uh, another really important part of uh, topic two, which is mechanics. Uh, very first thing I want to show you actually is the opposite of uniformly accelerated motion, which is um, not accelerating motion. Okay, so in that case right there, just, uh, just to be a little bit clear here, I just want to write down sort of a distinction right here. So if it is not accelerating, then it's actually really easy. Okay, so if it's not accelerating, then you use just the regular equations of motion that you've probably learned a long time ago, which is that the speed is equal to the distance divided by the time. In this case right here, we could say V equals uh, S over T. Right, remember S means uh, distance. Now this could also be the vector version, it could be the velocity is the displacement over time, or it could be, uh, yeah, just the speed is the distance over time. Either way, uh, this is really, really easy. That's all you have to do if it's not accelerating. So that's really easy. However, if it is accelerating, then the speed changes every second. So this could be like uh, you in your car, for example, um, and then you know if you step on the gas, well, what happens? Well, that means then that you you change your speed, right? So you go actually a little bit faster. So in that sense, um, that's when you have acceleration. Another example of acceleration could actually be, uh, let's say, um, yeah, you just drop off a cliff or something like that. I mean, if you do that, you actually accelerate because your speed increases and then it increases some more and it increases some more. So that's what we mean by acceleration. Okay. So if we're actually looking for uh, acceleration, uh, accelerated motion. Okay. So um, what we do is we say it's uniformly accelerated because we're assuming that the acceleration is the same. We're assuming a constant acceleration. Okay, so we're assuming that we have some sort of acceleration value that's actually constant. Uh, what I'm going to do is just put this just off to the side a little bit, just because that's just part of it. If it's not accelerating, then you do that stuff. But if it is accelerating, then we have some equations of motion that we can actually uh, use. So in this sense right here, we have what I like to call the four equations of motion. Okay, so if we look at these four equations of motion, uh, not all of them are on your equation sheet uh, or on your data booklet. Um, if you haven't seen it before, this is the data booklet. Well, it looks just like a white piece right now, but um, so you can see I'm actually not that, that pale. See, there's a slight difference in my uh, skin tone color compared to this white piece of paper. But uh, this is your data booklet, and uh, I'll be showing you this in more detail because obviously it's hard for you to read it right now. But if you take a look at it, uh, what's really important is that you get some equations here, uh, especially to help you out with uh, topic two. Um, but in my opinion, at least, there's some equations there uh, that are not in your data booklet that are actually really important to use. There's very few of them, however. Um, so what I'm going to do is as we go along, I'm going to make sure to highlight the ones that I think are worth uh, memorizing. There's not very many, uh, but the very first one I'm going to give you is actually one of them. So the first uh, of the equations of motion that's not given in your uh, data booklet is this one right here. V equals U plus AT. Uh, I consider that sort of equation one. I'll explain what each of these means in a second here. But uh, then, so that one right there is not in your equation sheet or data booklet. I should call it the right thing. Um, however, this one right here is, okay, so we have S equals uh, U plus V divided by two, all that times T. Sometimes we put a little bracket here. And then we have uh, a third one, uh, and that one is um, this one right here, S equals U T plus one half A T squared. And then we have a final one, which is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Now these three right here are on your equation sheet or on your data booklet. Okay, these three right here. This one is just worth remembering because, well, first of all, uh, there's not so much to it. Um, just v equals u plus at. 
I think though it would help to actually write down what each of these letters means, because without that it doesn't really tell us much. So in the, in the case of these ones here, you might recognize S, and you might recognize T and V, but then we have a U going on and you might not be sure. So just to be absolutely sure that we're talking about the same things, I'm going to tell you what everything means. So U is the initial speed or velocity. In this case, let me just say initial velocity, but it could be a speed as well. So U is initial velocity, and that will be measured in meters per second. Now, the way I remember what units we use for speed is I just think, well, what happens when you see a speed limit if you're driving around? Well, in uh, Denmark and uh, most of the rest of the world, you see things in kilometers per hour. Then I think, well, kilometer is a unit of distance. That's why it's distance on the top. And then per hour, well, that's a unit of time on the bottom. So U is initial velocity or initial speed, uh, which is in meters per second. V then is the final velocity. And that's also in meters per second. Okay, so here we're starting off initially with some sort of speed and then we speed up or perhaps we uh, slow down. So then maybe your initial velocity is larger than your final velocity. It doesn't matter. There's no problem there. Uh, so that's in U and V. And then we have A. That's the acceleration. And that's going to be assumed to be constant. Okay, so here we're assuming constant acceleration. And that's going to be measured in meters per second squared. That's because it's meters per second per second. That's because your speed actually changes. Um, some people like to write actually an acceleration is a change in speed over change in time. That's another way to say it. I mean, this is also correct. Okay, so acceleration is a change in speed over a change in time, or you could say change in, oops, sorry, velocity over change in time. So see, you have a velocity, which is in meters per second, and then you divide that by time, which is per second again. So that's why we have meters per second per second, so that's meters per second squared. Uh, we have S, which is the um, displacement, if we're keeping everything in vector form, we're going to say displacement, which is in meters. And if you really want to do everything correctly, we should actually probably put a, putting little vector signs everywhere here, because these are all vectors. However, we could have them as not vectors if we wanted to. Um, and the last thing is t, which is time. And that's normally measured in seconds, or just s for seconds. So this gives you sort of the, the main players, so to speak, in, this, uh, in these four equations of motion. Remember, the last three are actually given in your data booklet, but the uh, very first one isn't, and it's actually very useful. So I often use that one um, just in solving uh, questions. These are immensely useful. What I like about physics is it actually gives math a purpose. I mean, physics and math are sort of, you know, best friends. In fact, uh, and it's hard to do one without the other, well, especially physics. Uh, it's hard to do that without math. And that's because we like to quantify things. So things are actually happening and we can measure them and predict what happens. And that's wonderful about uh, accelerated motion because we can use these simple equations here uh, to solve some situations that might seem really complicated. You know, like I could say, okay, you're initially driving in your car at a certain speed, and then you slam on the brakes. Uh, you know, what will be the acceleration you're going to feel? In other words, you know, are you going to, uh, you know, feel yourself sort of you know, slamming forward or back or whatever? Um, you could be talking about, you know, if you run into something, you know, how, how much force will you feel uh, if you run into something? And it turns out the force will be related to the acceleration. And the acceleration is this A term that's in uh, some of these different equations. Now, when I'm solving these equations, I like to teach my students a really easy trick for uniformly accelerated motion. The very first step, though, is to always think, is it accelerating? Because if it's got a constant speed, then it's not accelerating. All right, so that means, this means constant speed here. 
or constant velocity. And that's because, if you think about it, constant means not changing. And if you look, acceleration means a changing speed. See, acceleration says the speed changes. Well, constant speed, in this case over here, if I have a constant speed, it means I'm not accelerating. So um, it's a lot simpler to solve these things. So the way that I actually solve these questions if they're accelerated motion is to use a nice easy trick, and that trick is this. I like to call it UVAST. It especially works for IB students. Okay, so I call it UVAST. It's not anything brain-busting. There's a reason I call it that. It's because whenever I look at a question, the very first step that I do is to actually take a look at, okay, what's the situation? Is this thing accelerating? If it is, then I just think UVAST. And that means what I do is I write down what's U, what's V, what's A, what's S, what's T. I basically make a little table and take a look at what I know and what I don't know and sometimes uh, what I need to know. Because uh, you know, that's the, the key thing here. Some things we given, some information, maybe some information we're missing, and maybe some of it's missing and we don't care. Right? So sometimes it's sort of don't know, don't care. So I'm going to show you uh, an example of how we can actually use UVAST in order to solve some of these questions when we have accelerated motion.